just about done for the past for the past few days. The sun's been out. We've been out uh, hanging out with the butterflies and the uh, and the lilies. I have personally. I'm not so much a big fan of the lilies. The lilies are causing my uh, nasal uh, congestion. Caused me to wake about three o'clock in the morning to find myself uh, just one just breathing from one nostril. But by the end of the year, it's just about here. I mean, we're really just about done. We're we're going through a time of. You know what? What am I going to do after graduation? Where am I going to go? Uh, I've been I've been telling this one person that, I, that, I, that I'm going to marry her after I graduate, and now it's that time. Now I have to. Uh, some of us are are looking towards our careers. We're looking towards goals. Where some of us are even pers just, just just pursuing a further like education. Am I going to get my master's? Am I going to study this? Am I going to study that? Um, some of us are like are, are like okay. The, Got a pastor at church, do I really want to do that? Maybe I want to switch now to a different field. But it's at the end of the year, um, and, and uh, during these last few weeks, I found myself doing a lot of reflection, a lot of thinking over, um, and just looking back over my whole uh, college career and asking myself, what are some things that I've learned? What are some things that I've, that I've gotten? Uh, what is it that I've acquired? And I've done a lot of review. Uh, just, just the other day, I pulled out some papers that I had, uh, had written and uh, from like my first year, or, or my first quarter, so like my very first quarter in my very first class in uh, my college career. And I was like, oh, yeah, wow, wow, this is great. This is a great, uh, Derek, you're a great writer. Well, when you want to be and you're not rushing the night, the night before. And, um, and, and so, well, Derek, what are you saying? What are you talking about? What does all this have to do with the book of Philippians? Well, this review, this review that I, that I took on is the same thing that Paul is doing in this context. Paul's going over a review, something that he said before. Rather than being the student looking back at, at his work, rather than being the student um, uh, looking back over his test and his, and, and his study guide, Paul acts as an instructor and he's reviewing with his, uh, with his church here in Philippi. And if you have your Bibles, go to turn to Philippians chapter 3, verse 1. And it says these things. It says, Finally, my brother, rejoice in the Lord to write the same thing to you is no trouble for me. He says to write the same thing is no trouble. So Paul here is acting as that instructor that's going over that review like before the final exam. He's acting as that, as that one that wants to make sure that his audience, that his church, that his people, they have acquired this knowledge and that they have it. He has no problem going back over the same material again. As with any instructor, as with any great instructor, his motive is not simply to get through the material, his motive is to make sure that they have it, that they acquire it, and so that's why there's no problem. I'm, I'm, I mean, when we look at the church now, nothing that, that we learn through, through the Bible, it's nothing that is, that is new. It's not, it's not brand new. It's not, it's, not, it's not fresh. It's simply a review. We're going back over the same material, the same teachings. Why? So that we get it, so that, so that it becomes like second nature to us and so that we have it. So, well, Derek, what is it that Paul is reviewing? Go on and turn to uh, still that same chapter, but look at verse 2. He says, look out for the dogs, look out for those evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh. So now upon hearing that, we're like, okay, so the dogs, the evildoers, those who mutilate the flesh. Derek, are you speaking about three different groups? No. These names would, would, would have been names that uh, the Jews, or, or rather the Christians during the time, would have heard like their whole lives, you, they would have been called a dog, the evil doers, middle layers of flesh. These are these these these, these are names that they would, would have heard. And so what Paul is doing is he's juxtaposing the position that the Judaizers would have once called these Christians. He's now he's now saying you have it so wrong, you got it so backwards. You think you have it all figured out, but actually, you Judaizers, you are the very ones that are the dogs. You are the very ones that are the evil doers. You are the very ones that are the mutilators. <laughs> Of flesh. It's not, it's not these Christians that you're talking about. Derek, how do you know that, 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 that you're speaking about the, uh, the uh, Judaizers here? Well, 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 when we further read down into verse 3, he, he says, For we are the real circumcision. The real circumcision. What does that word mean? That word circumcision in the Greek, it is, it is understood as, as one who follows the law, one who follows the Torah, as it as it as it as it was those who were circumcised, they they were the ones that um, that had to follow this uh, this law of well, being circ being circumcised. It 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 it, uh, it associates with, with with the law. 
just with the Torah, uh, following those commandments, following that covenantal uh, relationship with God. And so, and so by Paul saying here in verse 3, saying we are the real circumcision, he's saying those Judaizers who have been calling you dogs, those Judaizers who have been calling you mutilators of flesh and evildoers, they got it wrong. You guys are, in fact, the real ones. We are, in fact, the real ones that are following the laws, following the rules, following the Torah. That is what, uh, that is what Paul is saying here by this, by, by, by this word of the real circumcision. Just to go back and just backtrack a little bit, uh, the dogs here, the, the, word, the word dogs that, um, that Paul is using in this context, it's not simply like a Fido. It's not a Fifi or a Lassie or a Toto. <laughs> This dog is referring to the dogs that were a nuisance. They were bothersome. They they weren't the little lap dogs that that, that, that just hang out and you and you carry it in a bag like Paris Hilton or Nicole Richie. These 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 are the dogs that that that, that were just gross. I mean they're I mean they're they're the ones that would eat the clean and the unclean meat. And so that's why the Judaizers have have no problem calling Christians or are those who are in uh, opposition to their way, to their understanding. That's why Paul has no, no problem saying, well, they are actually the ones that eat unclean and clean meat. You are the dogs. E evildoers, the, the, uh, the, the Judaizers were, were the ones who thought they had it all right. They, they, they thought they followed the Torah to a T. I mean, they dotted their I's, they crossed their T's, they had great punctuation marks. They even used uh, that one punctuation that, that, that we never use. The semicolon, I don't even know what, what, uh, what uh, that's about. But they even used the semicolon, they crossed the T, and they dotted their, and they dotted their eyes. That joke fell flat. <laughs> okay. I got it, I got it. <laughs> and, and, um, and, then, and, then, and then what it even says is that it even calls them mutilators of flesh. Mutilators of flesh. Uh, I'm not going to get into uh, too much of a details here. Yes, I am. Yes, um, he says mutilators of flesh um, by, by, by saying they're the real circumcision. Now, remember that in verse 3, he's calling uh, the Christians the real circumcision. You have it, really, you got it right. He calls the, he calls the, um, the other guys the mutilators of flesh. He's saying, he's saying you might think you, you've been surgically altered by a professional. That's not the case. He's saying you've been mutilated. Um, the word uh, that's within this context of mutilated is described as that would be chopped into pieces, not with, within the Greek. It's, it's, it's defined as being chopped in like chunks. So you get the image of what I'm saying. Uh, I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to put that into my sermon. I was like, is there, is there another way that I can go about that? And you know, no, there's not. That's, that, that's what the word means. He's saying that, that, that you're simply mutilators of flesh. So we go on now. Let's. Let, 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 let's continue down to, uh, to uh, verse 4. Or actually, let's, let's, let's stay at verse 3 just, just, for, just for a little bit. For we are the real cir circumcision. What makes one the real circumcision? What makes one the real followers of Christ, the real uh, adherers to the law and adherers to the Torah? It's this right here. We are the real circumcision who, wor who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus. Jesus. And then he goes on to say, and we put no confidence in flesh. So as the Judaizers, they follow this law, they follow this toward to the T. I mean, they even use that semicolon. They thought they were the ones that had it all together. They, had, they thought they had it all figured out. That's not the case. Paul, Paul is saying real worship, real worship, real uh, adhering to the law, real adhering to the Torah, is the worshiping God by, by spirit and glory in Christ Jesus, by putting no confidence in the things that, that you acquire, the things that, that, that you do, the, 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 um, the uh, uh, it's, 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 not about, it's not about all of your bells and whistles, it's not about all your medals of honor, it's about what's inside. Nothing, that's, nothing on the outside can be achieved for righteousness. You can't become righteous through just your outside living and your outside talking. If you don't have it really inside of you, the Holy Spirit, that's what makes one a real follower. That's, that's what makes one a real worshiper, a real righteous person in Christ. Let's continue on. Uh, 